Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we are doing another wide scale comparison of lots of products. And in this video, we are looking at spray and rinse sealants, sometimes referred to as kind of drying aids, sometimes referred to as kind of wet coats. We are gonna be putting eight market leading products up against each other and coming up with some really, really strong recommendations for you on which ones to buy. Let's get stuck into this testing. Welcome back to the channel guys. So we're doing another wide scale comparison of lots of different products. This time taking the spray and rinse, spray sealant, wet coat, all these different words, drying aid. Um, essentially sealants that you spray onto the car after you've washed them when the car is wet and then you can rinse them off and then towel down. It should make drying the car easier and you apply a sealant at the same time. Um, <laughs> now I've got products from all over the world here guys. Let's run through the lineup of this test. We have in no particular order Sonex spray and seal. Next up from the UK bead juice from Bouncers. Next up from Germany is the concentrated Koch Chemie PW protector wax where you actually take a small amount of the product and mix it out into a foam pump sprayer so you get a litre of product each time. So it's slightly different to most of these other offerings which by default, if I don't tell you, are just ready to go spray and rinse sealants. From the USA Turtle Wax Dry and Shine Rinse Wax. Next up from the UK is the Auto Glim Polar Seal. Slightly different from the other ones, this one is designed, it's a concentrate that's designed to be put in a snow foam lance and applied that way through your pressure washer. Then we have, coming out of Korea, Gion, the ceramic coating company with all these kind of sexy products, Gion Wet Coat. Then coming out of the USA, we have Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax. And finally, we have an aerosol um, product which you can still spray onto a kind of wet car and use in the same way. So we've got these different formats we're going to talk about. From Soft 99 is Raindrop, or maybe also known as Bazooka. In this comparison, guys, we're going to be looking at the price of these products and more importantly, the cost per application. We are going to be measuring gloss, which one delivers the most gloss. We're also going to be measuring on our row point IQ, which one leaves the least amount of haze behind. Um, we're looking at slickness, we're looking at durability, we're looking at beading, we're looking at ease of application and tendency to streak and all those good things. And at the end, we will provide you with some recommendations based on all this testing. Spray and rinse products, guys, one thing to understand about them is they, ex they are extremely concentrated because when you're spraying the product onto a wet car, you're gonna be adding a massive amount of water and effectively diluting these products down. The aim of these products is to kind of, or any sealant or kind of protective product is to fit, fill, form, <laughs> is to form a film over the surface of your car, bond to your car, stay there and provide protection to your car. The biggest risks with spray and rinse products are misapplication through over concentrating the products in particular areas. These products are cationic in nature. And what I mean by that is they are charged. And there's a certain component in there typically that will contain a siloxane that is charged and it is drawn to the clear coat. And if an over concentration of that product is allowed to draw, to, to bond to that particular clear coat, you can get a streaky thick um, patch of product which you will see and the longer it stays on there the harder it is to remove. Following instructions is very important. Not using too much product is critically important. Not leaving the products on there for too long is critically important. Not using the products in hot temperatures is critically important. They're all designed to kind of, they've got active ingredients and carriers and of course, when you're using them on wet cars, your carrier suddenly becomes a variable. So there's all sorts of things. And we'll do another video on how you can go about applying these and get great results, guys, because there's some people that are very upset with spray and rinse products and get poor results. More often than not, not always, but more often than not, it is down to misapplication. Let's get stuck into this testing. 
Okay guys, I'm gonna go through the important thing here, which is cost per application. In the description below, I'll list all of the prices so you can see them there visually. But it's the cost per application that's important. I have scaled them in, in reverse order. So this is the most expensive through to the most cheapest. Um, so in last kind of place is the Soft 99 Raindrop. It's at a massive disadvantage because it's an aerosol product with only 150 mil. Next up is the Meguiar's, which I worked out roughly as a cost per application of £1.30 based on RRP. After that, I have the Sonex Spray and Seal, which I work out to be £1.13 per application. After that, bead, uh, yep, bead Juice from Bouncers, 95p for application, so a little bit of a step down. After that, Gion Wet Coat, 90p per application. Next, Auto Glim Polar Seal, 80p per application. After that, Koch Chemi Protector Wax, 60p per, per application. Note, these two are the concentrates. This one is kind of ready to go. So the winner on cost per application, um, based on an RRP of eight pounds and using 50 mil, per application, which I think is probably about right, is the Turtle Wax um, Dry and Shine Rinse Wax, which is around 53p per application, which is great value. So this comes in first place on the value for money. Next up, guys, gloss. We are lucky on this channel that we have a very sophisticated bit of gloss recording equipment. I'm not gonna go into all my methodology and stuff like that because it makes the video too long. I am looking at high gloss readings and R-spec comparisons taken on averages over my test panels. These are the results, guys. Um, the numbers that I have here on my bit of paper are the max 20 degree gloss added to the max R spec readings to give me an overall winner, okay? Which is basically looking at two forms of gloss. In last place in the gloss was Koch Chemi giving me a, a, a rating of 183.8, okay? Think of the maximum as 200, although that statement isn't quite true, but just to give you a rough idea. So 183.8. In next place was Bouncer's Bead Juice with 184.2. After that was Soft 99 with 185.0. Um, after that was Meguiar's with 185.1, virtually the same. After that was Auto Glim, a little jump up of 188.3. Next, Tide with 190.8, exactly on the averages, was Turtle Wax and Geon, so they're exactly the same. And then in first place with 191.8 was the Sonax product. Uh, I made a little note here of which ones I thought from using gave you the most gloss. And I gave it to Turtle Wax. I put Turtle Wax and Gion down as the two that I thought were the most glossy. Very inaccurate reading, it's just my eyeball. But the gloss meter says this one is the best. So those are your results in terms of gloss. Next up is measuring haze. The Rowpoint IQ, IQ Gonio photometer can also measure the amount of haze on a particular surface. Um, so we've applied these to, to all over that panel and recorded the haze. And simply at this end, we've got the ones that added the lowest amount of haze and this that added the most. And I'll give you the readings as well. Obviously the closer to zero, the better. A zero me reading means there is zero haze. So let's go through what we recorded. Uh, in last place, Koch Chemi with 8.5 units of haze. After that, Bouncer's Bee Juice with 7.7 .7 units of haze. After that, Soft 99 with 7.1 units of haze. After that, Gion Wet Coat with 6.4 units of haze. After that, Auto Glim Polar Seal with 4.9 units of haze. Next, in joint second place, with 4.2 units of haze, was Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax and turtle wax, dry and shine rinse wax. And in first place, again, was Sonex Spray Plus Seal. So conclusions are that the best looking of all these products, according to the Gonio Photometer, is the Sonex Spray and Seal. Next up, guys, is slickness. And I do this by putting the same objects on the test panels and then raising the level and see which ones slide off 
kind of first. That's as good as I can get on this channel, okay? And it's actually reasonably good. I do also feel them and try and make a note of which ones I think feel the slickest as well, but I'm basing it on the sort of lab test, if you like, but I will talk about the ones that I thought were slick to the touch. Here's the results, guys. In last place, Soft 99. After that was Maguire's. After that was Autoglin. After that, Koch. And then Bouncers, Gion, Turtle Wax, and Sonax again. So that is based on the tilt testing. We repeat the test lots of times and I move them around. I move the little um, sponges around just to make sure there isn't a better sponge than the other one. They're all brand new now. And they, this time I use those little, um, what are they called? Magic sponges, you know, the magic erasers. They seem to be quite a good way of doing it, actually. Um, no, to the touch, the ones that I thought were the slickest to my to the back of my hand, feeling the paintwork, I thought Gion Wet Coat, followed by Turtle Wax, followed by Sonax. So these three were the ones to the touch. No, you know, it's so inaccurate. But it's interesting that I still got the top three right, but in the other order. So... Um, I think the tilt table is the one to go on, so Sonax again is the winner of this particular test. Next up guys, this is my interpretation of durability based on leaving that panel outside and actually washing it periodically with a normal kind of detergent that is just a normal car detergent that isn't going to mask, but it isn't also designed to strip and leaving it out in the elements to weather. So what I didn't do is a continuous hit of um, detergents to break them down. So it's closer to a kind of real world test. Um, and the panel's, the panel's actually still out there. It's been out there for months now, um, but there are a couple of them still working. Let me just crack on to the kind of results summary. In my opinion, guys, in my opinion, I've just got these ones the wrong way around. There's not much in it. The lowest durability one is the Koch Chemi product, and I will overlay all the, sh the shots. This is primarily based on water repellency that I'm observing after this, which is all you kind of got to go on. After that, I would say the Polar Seal. After that, the Sonex Spray and Seal. After that, the Bouncers, then Wet Coat. These three are pretty close, but that order I think is correct. This one then has a slight edge over these ones, and then these two, have a definite edge over all of them in terms of durability, but I'd actually give it to the um, Soft 99 product. This just gets buried a little bit more, the Soft 99. You have to clean it back to kind of reveal the hydrophobicity. But this is the most durable one in the test, in my opinion, followed by Meguiar's, reasonably closely followed by Meguiar's. Next up in this test is the level of hydrophobicity, how fast it repels water, the level of beading. You know the whole score with this one. People love products to have that rapid water kind of repellency characteristics. Um, let's go through, this is my order. It's similar to the durability in, in, from what I can see, not exactly the same. In last place is the protector wax. On application, it's hydrophobic, but it's more of a sheeter than the kind of bead. And, and I think it might be wax based as well and it just seems to fade away a little bit quicker and doesn't have that rapid repellency. Pretty similar with the Autoglim one. Um, on application there's a good hydrophobic effect but it's just not as prolific as these other products um, based on using it at the recommended concentration ratios. Um, so yeah these two were down a little bit on water repellency than all these ready to go ones. Next up these three here there was very little in it really. This is on application. You could pretty much say these three were level and they are very good. They are known for being strong beading products, but they are just pipped by these three here that are, I would classify as super hydrophobic almost, um, very repellent. And you can see the difference. And I, again, I'll overlay the shots of what I'm seeing. Um, the the bazooka, the raindrop stuff, once you've laid that down, it's all of these Soft 99 products, they use different water repellent materials to all of these other products. I think they use forms of PTFE, you know, and they are very, very repellent, and they also seem to last very long. So this stuff's um, quite a powerful repellent of water. This stuff, this stuff, after it's sprayed down, is extremely hydrophobic, and it seems to bond more rapidly than the other ones. Some of them you can spray onto a car, 
And then as you sort of rinse the water off, you see the repellency kind of pop through and build up. With this one, it just it's just instant. As soon as it touches the car, um, it's there. So it seems to bond a lot quicker. Or it might ju it might just be more concentrated in the in the cationic component, the siloxane. But it's very powerful. This one, the Meguiar's one. If you apply it properly, with by putting their base layer application down, where you you know you spread it and you towel it up if you like, and then you can do the spray and rinse afterwards. If you get it right, this product beads like crazy. If you don't shake this product, that can really affect it. Um, and if you don't do the initial application to set that foundation layer, that can sometimes affect your results as well. So you have to just get your application right. But I think with Meguiar's, if you do get that application right, it's known for being a really hydrophobic product on application. Um, I've got a good eye for measuring this. I've been throwing water at panels ever since I was wake making waxes back in the day. What I look for is actually to measure it, it's best to look for the speed of the sheeting rather than trying to look at the beads and the angles, in my opinion, because you just can't tell with your eyes. Um, and that's how I do it. And I'm pretty confident in the order of the results I've given you there. So if you like hydrophobic products, then you've got three mega ones, three very good ones, and then three kind of normal hydrophobic levels, in my opinion. Next up, guys, this is perhaps the most speculative one in this test. That is ease of application. But the key point to understand is I think these are all easy to apply products that you can put on your car very rapidly. The best way to understand this perhaps is risk of misapplication. And I think I've done this fairly. Now in last place is the Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax. If you don't apply this properly, it will make an absolute mess of your car. And I've seen the pictures of people that have been sent to me by people that have applied it wrong. More often than not, when it's gone wrong, and I ask them how much they've applied, it's usually about half a bottle to one bottle in a single application, where Meguiar's say, you know, you should be using 25 or 30 mil or something like that, you know. So more often than not, the number one culprit problem with this is spraying way too much on, which is, you know, typically the problem with these spray and rinse things. That's what goes wrong, as I mentioned at the start of the video. However, this is the whitest, gloopiest, least soluble, least thin, least watery of these products. And it is, when you spray it in and you've got loads of water and you're blasting that water around, it's harder to see what's going on. You really need to get this product off with a pressure washer when you're doing the rinse part of it. And do that with a little bit more care and attention. Or when you come to drawing back the car, you may well discover that you've let blotches or thick concentrations of the product settle and um, you know form a thick film of product over a certain area and if so and you leave it um, that's going to be a bit of a pain to get off you'd probably have to polish it off um, although if you catch it there and then you could probably use an IPA wipe possibly so be a bit careful with the Meguiar's hybrid ceramic wax next up is the turtle wax now interesting I did that video on this saying that this is a really this is a really powerful, beady monster of a kind of drying aid product, and it is, and I love this stuff. And I wouldn't say a lot of people replied, but a few people replied saying, I've applied this, and it made an absolute mess of my car, it's garbage, and I threw it in the bin. And I was like, no, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. And I think to a certain extent, you are doing it wrong if you get poor results. However, yes, <laughs> yes, some of my patrons um, feedback to me. One guy did a really good write-up summary of this, bought it, and it cost him a five or four pounds seventy-three. He paid for it because they were doing a deal, you know, at Euro Car Parts. Four pounds seventy-three. Sprayed it on his car, and he conceded that he sprayed loads on his car, or perhaps too much. I think he conceded that there was too much used, and chose not to towel dry it because it says on the instructions you can just drive your car to dry it. So the first thing with this product is, in my opinion, do not spray it on and drive your car to dry it, okay? Um, you know, um, that they say here, the wording is, any residual drops should be towel dried or simply jump in and drive it to dry. My recommendation is don't drive it, towel dry it, because any excess product that's on the panels, toweling will absorb it or spread it, which will help help make a, 
uh, you know, it's all about film formation and that will help make a thinner film. So, yes, also with this particular product, be careful about spraying it on glass, in my opinion, because it is so strong. Um, I would say that rule about spraying it on glass, for me, goes with all of these products. <sighs> It's, we haven't got too long on these videos, but you, you need to be careful spraying these spray and rinse products on your glass. Most things that you spray on glass benefit from prep. And a lot of times you're just washing your car, you're rinsing off, and then you're hurling these products at the glass. And again, when it's on glass, a lot of times you'll be inside the car and you'll have the sunlight there and you'll get a real true representation of what's going on. And if you haven't spread that product properly over the glass, you'll see those footprints of it. Um, the fact that you can see it on glass, if you've got blotches on your glass, it's probably on your paintwork as well, you just haven't spotted it. Um, you need to be careful with these spray and rinse products, but I've talked about that already. Stay tuned to my channel and I'll do a video on streaking shortly after this video, okay? So after that we have Gion Wet Coat, we have the Raindrop, which I find this one is pretty easy to apply. You just don't want to put too much in one space because you've got to spread this around, but this atomizes it nicely in the can. Pretty nice product to apply. Beyond this point, you need to be careful with both these products as well on glass, all totally and even advising the instructions. Don't spray this on your glass. If you do, just go over and clean your glass, you know, wipe it off and then wash your glass with their glass cleaner afterwards because it can be patchy and streaky if it's allowed to set on the glass. Same with all of them. In my opinion, the two friendliest ones to apply are the Bee Juice and the Sonax, where it just seems a bit harder to make the, the patches that I can sometimes see if you put too much of the other ones on. So um, I don't know why. They're all probably using different materials, different size, different formulations, different siloxane. Some have got carnauba waxing, some maybe just sealant, some are SiO2, some are God knows what, some are PTFE. So the formulations are all different. Those two um, are the easiest to apply. Let's move on. Right, we're getting to the end of this video now, guys. We're going to do some, su some final summary recommendations. First up, if you are professional in the trade, which of these products should you be looking at using potentially? In my opinion, the Koch Chemie and the Autoglim products give you these concentrates. This, you can, each time you use 30 mil, you mix up a litre of it in a pump sprayer. You can use a lot less than that. So this could have actually won the value for money. Same with the Auto Glim one. You can mess around with this. You don't have to use quite as much as they say. 40 mil, I think it is, per application or whatever. Um, you can also water it down even more and just have some in a pump sprayer or one of those mercury sprayers and just use it as a drying aid and have some protection. Suddenly then the value of this goes up from great to ridiculously cheap. Alternatively, if you just want one that's ready to go, the Turtle Wax one is very, very good value for money, especially if you get it for the ridiculous, ludicrous giveaway price that some places seem to be selling it for. Um, the irony here, and we'll move on to the irony in the next bit. Those are my three recommendations if, you, if you're a professional and you'll get through in ton, you're getting through tons of products on which ones you should use. Just need to be a little bit more careful with the Turtle Wax product, perhaps. Okay, guys, next up, I'm going to give my final recommendation. So I'm going to do in fourth place through to bronze, silver, and gold. Fourth, third, second, and first. Just how I want to do it. In fourth place, I'm putting the Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Wax. Um, the ease of application is the Achilles heel of this, the white, thick, gloopy nature of it. Um, that's the downside that might put people off. The value for money is a positive. Also, the performance and the durability of this product, I think, is very decent. Uh, I like the way it looks, even though it didn't win the gloss test. I've talked about this a lot on the channel. I just think this is a decent SiO2 product, but the gloopy nature is its Achilles heel, and using too much of it and getting streaking is what people seem to be complaining about although it's down to the user because you can get great results with this guys just speak to enough people there's a lot of people that are liking it next up in third place is the sonax spray and seal this is in third place it's you know it's quite an expensive product along with most of them you know it's not offering you much value this particular product it's not offering you massive durability 
decent repellency on application, but just seem to be nice to apply, less risk of streaking, and very good, won the gloss and the haze, and that's not by um, coincidence, so it might be the best looking of all, of all these particular products. Next up, second place, Turtle Wax Dry and Shine Rinse Wax. Ironically, getting back to the irony thing, Turtle Wax, I heard professional detailers say this, I'm a professional detailer, I don't use Turtle Wax products, they're, you know, they're, they're the store products that are for the mass market, I use other things because they're more powerful. The irony is, that is the most dumb, stupid statement I've ever heard. Because this Turtle Wax product, it's, its downfall perhaps is the fact that it's ridiculously concentrated, it's ridiculously powerful, it is easy to misapply it, um, but it's also fantastic value for money if you're plowing, if you're plowing through product. And a professional detailer, once he's used a fair old bit of this, um, and realise, you know, just don't, just don't throw loads of it on. One mist per panel, rinse it straight off, this in one hand, the hose in the other, mist on, rinse off, work your way around the car, towel down immediately, zero problems, I guarantee you. Hurl it all over your car, you know, hurl it on, leave it there, come back, at, you know, two minutes later, where you put a lot of it on, yes, you will potentially can make a streaky mess of your car. Um, so that's its Achilles heel. I love this one. Uh, it's so hydrophobic. When I'm ta toweling the car down afterwards, it just feels so nice and it looks so nice as well. And it's so, I don't want to keep saying it, but it's just so cheap. I love the, the idea that I can go and get this for pennies and it, and it performs just as well as any of them. Wouldn't matter if there was a product here called professional only, super, you know, super performance, professional grade product only. This will be more powerful than it and, and cheaper as well. So forget about some of the things you hear in my opinion. There's a lot of old nonsense out there. Um, the winner guys, Gion Wetcoat. Why the hell is Gion Wet Coat winning, John? It's not the cheapest. It's not the most hydrophobic. It's not the most durable. It's not the most glossy. It's not the most slick. I have said in other videos, <clears throat> with bulk standard chemicals, detergents, cleaners, you know, consumable things that you're using, I want value for money because they're tools and I'm blasting my way through. When it comes to protection products, the things that are sitting on my car for months, the things that you struggle to ever use up as a guy at home, don't you? They're like luxury items. You never get through them. I've got enough sealants and waxes and spray sealants to, you know, to, to keep me going for 10 lifetimes. What I'm looking for is not perhaps the cheapest product on the market, although I love a bargain. We all do, I just said that. But I'm looking for performance that's different. Now this product comes from a ceramic coating company and there is one claim on this here, this here product, I'm going all American here. <laughs> and you won't be able to see it, but it's got all the star ratings. Durability, gloss, beading, hardness, and at the bottom, self-cleaning. And the self-cleaning, it must be rated at six stars because it gives itself five and a half stars for. When I apply all these products to my test panel and I take that test panel outside, the first time I came back, you know, a few days later and I spray water over the panel, all of the other products, the hydrophobic performance is gone because of all the debris that's fallen, the dirt that's below a tree, um, the rainwater that hits on it and stuff like that, except for the strip of product where the Geon wet coat is, which is still beading and running the water off. That is the only time I've ever seen self-cleaning in action with any product that is not a ceramic coating. And this isn't a ceramic coating, is it? It's a water-based thing, you know, but it's got some clever SI-esque materials in it. This wins because I am looking for companies to push the boundary, offer materials which are beyond wax-based spray waxes, you know, Carnuba waxes, beyond even these siloxanes, you know, the cationic siloxanes, which this will still have. I'm looking for clever technology, and if I ever see it, then that gets recommended. For this reason, in this particular test, this would be the only product I would recommend you could put on top of a ceramic coating, because the other ones, 
I don't see it giving you the self-cleaning as well. Meguiar's will be saying ours is a ceramic as well and it offers self-cleaning. Guys, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I can't see it. It gets buried and I have to clean it to show up the hydrophobicity. Um, that is why Gion Wet Coat wins this particular test. It is why I love Gion products, the stuff that comes out of Korea generally is using different materials, I think, to the stuff we use in America, the stuff we use in the UK and Germany. Um, and I love Gion products, and I think this is a great product. It doesn't last as long. All these other things that are measurable, some people could argue it shouldn't win, but it's my favorite. That's why it's winning. That is the conclusion of this test. Thank you very much for watching guys. So I've given you all the information there. Let me know what products you'd have liked to see in this test. We've got eight market leading ones in there. There's lots of other great ones. So let me know, we'll try and incorporate those next time. Let me know um, whether you agree or disagree. Someone else could do this test and come up with a completely different set of results. These are kind of mine and I've given you the reason. Uh, guys, if you like this channel, um, none of the content on Forensics Detailing channel is paid for or sponsored. I do not do any promotional content. So if you value these types of tests, um, where they're generally costing me more money than they make, you know, I'll get the old violin out. But if you value the tests, head over to the Patreon page and you can follow and get behind the scenes access to some other goodies. I won't talk about it too much. There's a link in the description to where the Patreon is and you can join it for as little as $1 a month, uh, which helps support the channel and you can opt out whenever you like. Also, don't forget we're on Instagram, Facebook, and we have a little sister parent child channel called Forensics Unplugged, where I do kind of lots of more informal stuff. And I'm gonna now fire up the camera and talk a little bit more um, in a relaxed way where I'm not under the timer about some of these products and some of the problems we face doing this particular uh, video. Thanks very much for watching. Finally, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the bell button. Take care, guys. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos and supporting the channel. Uh, it means a lot to me. Take care, and I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. Holding on to what I knew, but the moment's gone. Where was I when